Are people gonna get mad at me for this? Whatever, I like being able to see. This is weird. And it's better now. Hello, welcome, or welcome back today. So across from me right now, there is a chocolate lab licking himself now. But when I clapped my hands, he started wagging his tail, and that was really cute. So anyway, hello, welcome, welcome back. We did the thing, we've done the introduction, have we? I don't know. I've had a lot of requests to do service dog related videos and like training videos and stuff and this is not a training video but I'm gonna talk to you about how training is going. Hi Sadie. Did you know I'm talking about you? You good girl. So I have a rescue dog named Sadie. She turned one in October and we've had her for a year on December 27th so so I guess around 14 months now I've had her. Um, she has made my life so much easier in so many ways and so much more difficult in so many ways. Something that you need to know if you're thinking about getting a service dog is that it is a lot of work. It is so much more work than you even sign up for um, unless you are a puppy whisperer and know how to get them to learn everything right on the first try. <laughs> Which, that's not a real thing. Sorry, I cut my finger open yesterday, opening a jar of Nutella. I don't know if you can see it, but it hurts. Um, it's essentially a paper cut, but it was with metal. Anyway, so at this point in the game, we have been actively training for, I guess, about a, a, between 12 and 13 months. What is it that you need, Sadie? Hey? She doesn't like it when I'm in the office. She whines at me until I go out of here. <laughs> I acknowledge you. I know you're my boss. But you know what? Right now, Mama's working for her other boss. The people. She's staring at me. She's gonna whine as soon as I actually start saying something new. Just watch. So we've been training actively for 12 or 13 months now. I'm, I'm not gonna go into how we've done everything because that's a lot. That's a year's worth of stuff for one video and that is just that overwhelms me, so we're, we're gonna do that another time. But at this point in the game, she has a lot of her tasks nearly completely polished. Um, so her tasks are, sorry, I forget things a lot, so I, I have a notebook here. Um, her tasks that she does on a daily basis are deep pressure therapy and um, anxiety alert. like. I call them alerts. I don't know if they're medical alerts or anxiety alerts. I mean, she's a psych... I can't speak. She is a psychiatric service dog for complex PTSD, and I believe some of her tasks that have been trained are technically medical alert. I don't know. But now I'm doing this robotic movement and I can't stop. Yeah, so her alerts are basically to if my breathing changes, like I start to not necessarily sigh a lot, but I'll just like <sighs> and blow out through my mouth just like as a way to try to regulate my breathing and a lot of the time it just kind of happens <laughs> and I don't really realize I'm doing it. In fact, the other night I started doing that. She's gone now, by the way. That's why she didn't alert to that because I did it the one time and she's in another room. Please don't blacklist me in the service dog groups. The other night I we were talking about making pierogies or something. It was like very late at night and I started to get overwhelmed with excitement. So I started doing the heavy breathing and Sadie was curled up falling asleep beside me and we were like, what the heck dog, do your job. Still working on some tasks. One of her alerts is um, when I pull out my, my hairs. I'm trying to teach her, like when I catch myself doing it, I try to pair that behavior with a command to alert um, and eventually she will do it by herself. Um, things that we're still working on right now, it's a lot of public access. Sometimes I don't I don't bring her with me everywhere. Um, that's a common misconception about service animals is that they accompany their handler everywhere and like they can and a lot of the time they do but based on your needs and how far along your dog is in training and yada 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 so many factors you may not want to or need to or be able to bring your dog with you absolutely everywhere and a lot of the time these days especially I just don't have the energy when I'm going to the grocery store it's like I would rather feel the crushing 
overstimulation, and I would rather maybe have an episode than, <laughs> than have one more person ask me what she's for and who I'm training her for. So it's just, you know, it depends. Um, I never regret bringing her with me. I usually regret not bringing her with me, but that's, that's just, that's a me thing. That's, we'll save that for another day. So yeah, she gets overwhelmed and afraid of traffic. Um, she does not like going downtown, so I'm trying to slowly expose her to that a little bit more. Looking back, I probably would have tried to take her in more crowded public places with a lot of traffic um, when she was younger, but I just, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't, and maybe that's an owner, trainer, rookie mistake, but she is getting better with each time we go. There was a time when I couldn't get her out of the car, like, Okay, like, <laughs> cool. <laughs> now, no matter how scared she is, it's like her vest makes her brave. Like I put the vest on her and she's like, all right, fine, I'll come, I'll do it, I'll do it. But she doesn't like it. <laughs> so I'm trying to slowly get her to a point. Oh shit, my battery's dead. Ugh. If you're wondering why I look different from one shot to the next, it's because my battery died and then I made food and did some laundry and put on a sweater because I got chilly. <laughs> but I wrote down on my notebook that I have told you so much about uh, where I was. So I'm trying to get her to, yes, I'm trying to get Sadie to a point where she's comfortable being in traffic and just around big vehicles and stuff. Um, so basically the thing that's gonna help with that is just time and practice and moving at her pace and rewarding her when she does well. Um, just the same as with anything else. You really want to move at your dog's pace and you don't want to rush things. Slow is fast is a thing that I've heard a lot when it comes to service dog training, which is absolutely true. Because if you try to rush things, it may seem like, yep, yeah, this, is, this is a good option in the moment. And then later when it backfires, you know, not a good idea, because um, you can like traumatize your dog in just a hundred different ways that it can go wrong. But that's why we're gonna take it slow and steady, and it's fine that she isn't perfect, because it's only been a year, and it takes two years to train a service dog, and their training is never really done, and all that stuff. But um, for where we are in our training, I think she's doing as well as anyone can expect her to. She's doing a good job. I don't see myself washing her. So um, for those of you who don't know what that means, um, to wash out a service dog means to have them retire early or not even take the test. Just kind of like accept that the service dog life is not for them. <laughs> and then move on to another candidate. Um, but that is not a thing that I'm worried about at this point, which is good. Which is very good because when I first brought her home, I was so nervous and so scared and sometimes I still get nervous and scared um, because of course I do. But <laughs> more specifically, I worry that like she's not where she's supposed to be at this point in the game. But something to remember is that you can't compare yourself to another team because every dog is different, every person is different, every disability is different. The jobs that different handlers need their dog to do, they may not relate to everybody. So it's really not fair to yourself <laughs> to look at other teams and be like, why are we not there yet? Especially if they're further along in their training journey than you are. If you've been training for like six months, and you think to yourself, wow, why can't my dog do what her dog does? That's because we've been training for a year, a year of our lives, <laughs> which is the majority of her life. So she works very hard and I'm very proud of her. But another thing that we're still working on is distractions. Um, she still gets kind of distracted in public when people, you know, make the faces and the voices and the kissy noises and do the reaching thing where they pet her without asking me. She's gotten a lot better. She doesn't often do anything now, like she'll look at them and then look at me and like sometimes she'll wag her tail because she's still a puppy, she gets excited, but um, yeah, she does pretty well for the most part and if somebody doesn't know 
proper service dog etiquette and protocol and behavior and whatever you want to call it. If they don't know how a service dog is supposed to be acting, they think she's perfect at everything. Um, <laughs> that's absolutely not true, but she's well enough behaved that most of the time... Sadie Marco! All right, I'm quite frustrated. <laughs> Welcome back. If you hear anything annoying, it's my dogs because they're both locked in here with me now because people keep delivering mail and walking by the house and living their lives and they have to bark at the window, hey? They just have to. My standards are a little higher than that. I don't want her sniffing anything. I don't want her expressing interest in anybody who walks by and tries to do a drive-by petting. I want her to be focused on me at all times, like most times, like if she's tucked under my chair sleeping, obviously there's only so much focus you can get at that point, but I want her to do her job, <laughs> obviously. We're working on distraction training a little bit still, and she pulls sometimes when she's nervous and eager to go back to the car, or nervous or eager to go back to the car, like if I say where's the car, she'll just like, Zoop! and you know, baby steps. She's good most of the time. It's when she gets a little overwhelmed that she decides that she's gonna try to pull, and that's not acceptable, so that's a thing that we're still working on. We're absolutely still working on her behaving in the home, <laughs> okay? So she is a good dog. She's very nice. She loves to wrestle and play rough with Marco, um, but most of the time she is just sweet and little and cute and has a great personality. She's a very funny little dog. Uh, <laughs> but she barks at the window. And she's getting better. She's getting better, like all things. It takes time. Akuna Matata. But holy crap, it's annoying. And she also likes to jump on people when they come into the house, which is not acceptable. Like, for any dog. Not even just a service dog. That is unacceptable canine behavior, ma'am. We're working on it. <laughs> and it's very frustrating and very embarrassing. It's so embarrassing when people come over to my house and they're meeting Sadie in the home for the first time and she jumps on them. It's naughty. It's embarrassing. It's gotta go. Um, and it's happening, slowly but surely. As with all things in life, it takes a lot of hard work and a little bit of time. I don't know. That's basically all I have to report for now. I guess. So if anybody has the question of, hey Kalayla, how's your service dog training going? Um, good is the answer. It's going well. Uh, it's, we're about halfway there now. Um, if somebody asked me to do the public access test today, I would say, no way. We're, we're not ready for that. We're not, we're not. Six months from today, I want to be able to think, you know what? We'd probably lose a couple points, but I think I could take the public access test. That is my goal. Um, and I think that's a very reasonable goal. I want to have her completely 100% polished and just no room for error when we take the test. Because A, I only want to do it once. <laughs> um, I think I'm sure it costs money to take it. I haven't really looked into that too much yet, but like the note, the doctor's note that I have to get to take the test. I already bought that for $40 from my doctor, so, you know, uh, the paperwork costs money. B, I have horrible test anxiety. I just, no, I'm, I'm so scared. I still have my graduated driver's license because I am too nervous to take the test for, like, my full license. There's no reason to be. I drive every day, but it's ju it's just a thing. If you know, you know. <laughs> One time, and we're gonna nail it, we're gonna ace it, and it's gonna be absolutely all right. I guess in six months, maybe I'll make an updated video for you. Um, if you have any questions or anything you want to say, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I hope this has been a somewhat helpful update for people who are wondering about Sadie. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to be kind to yourself and others today, and I will see you very soon.